Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we need to start off this video by going to the shop, pulling my injectors off of my fuel rail, and heading down to Ranch Built for them to clean them. As you guys saw in my last video, we got the motor placed back into the STI, but as I was going through my checklist to make sure everything was good, I realized I never got my injectors cleaned and I did not want to continue without getting those cleaned. So thankfully this morning Ranch Built is going to be able to take care of us. And here we go. Here is the motor dropped into the STI. I do need to go through and pull the injectors, get them clean. If you guys have a project and your car has been sitting for a while and whatnot, I highly recommend you guys go get your injectors cleaned. It's very cheap and it will potentially save you a lot of money and failures. For me though, these are very big injectors. They are ID2600s. If they are stuck open, that is a very bad thing which will take out my motor which I absolutely do not want to happen. So I'm gonna play it safe today, get these pulled, head out to Ranch Built, they're about an hour away from me. And thankfully, the boys over at Ranch Built, thank you Chris, is gonna take care of me this morning. And there we have it, got all the injectors pulled off. Now it is time to head over to Ranch Built. Well, we are now done over at Ranch Built. They got my injectors cleaned. And I'm very happy I decided to get them clean and not just risk it because they were clogged. So that would have not ended good. Huge shout out to Chris, Ranch Built. Um, they always take care of us here. So huge appreciation to them. If they wouldn't have done this today, it would have been probably like another week and a half um, delay until I would have got the car started because I would have had to ship out the injectors because I don't know anywhere locally that I trust at least. I'm sure there's shops around that do it, just no one that I actually trust. But unfortunately it is later on the day now. I got here at like 9.30, it is now almost 12. Kinda got a little sidetracked, got a tour of some of the stuff that they're working on. But we're gonna head home now, hopefully be home around like 12ish and Hopefully I can get this car running today. All right, we are now back at my shop. Got the injectors cleaned. Again, huge shout out to Ranch Built for always taking care of us. Now we need to throw those back in and get to getting this motor put together. I've been fighting this one thing and I called it quits last night because I was too frustrated. I cannot get this motor mount into the subframe where the mount goes. For some reason, I've never had this issue. Sometimes it sits on top and you can just push it into place. This is fighting me like crazy, and I don't know why. I changed all, I have all 100% solid mounts throughout the entire like trans and motor, but it didn't give me an issue last time, so I need to figure that out first before I even think about starting anything. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I think, is put the cherry picker back on and get the motor slightly in the air so I can try to wiggle it around or see what is causing it to not drop down all the way. That way, it's a lot easier using the cherry picker than lifting the motor by myself, trying to figure out where it goes. And then after we get the motor dropped in 100%, I do need to verify that the clutch is working because I do not want to continue working on this car if the clutch is not properly engaged because it's a lot easier to pull the motor out right now than it is if I had this fully dressed up. That's one thing though, you guys always want to make sure if you guys are pulling motor out of any vehicle, when you're putting it back in, you want to make sure, gauge the throughout bearing and make sure that you can shift through the gears perfectly or else you're going to have to fix something. Something is wrong. I've done that one too many times of not verifying and then when I go to start the car, I cannot shift because something was done incorrectly. So it's just a good good rule of thumb to verify when you first put the motor in that the clutch works and then from there you can continue.
Well, we got the motor placed back in on the motor mounts this time. It just needed a second hand to help push. It dropped right into place. But I am running into an issue right now, and this is why it is good to make sure your clutch is working properly before you start assembling the rest of your motor. My slave, I cannot engage the throw out bearing. So something is going on inside the trans area. So thankfully, it's just a couple bolts. I can take out the motor again and take a look. But if we go in here, the gears are also kind of fighting me. Like, I can't get into first. I don't really want to force it in there right now. But second, or third and fourth are fine. Fifth, I can't get into. And I can't, so. <laughs> third and fourth are the only two gears. Oh, and second that I can get into. So we are gonna go ahead and pull this motor again and see what's going on if we can visibly see anything that's off. I know all the splines on the clutch are good um, because the alignment tool easily can go in and out. I know that's not an issue, so it has to be something with when I put the motor in, it just didn't quite line up with the splines on the input shaft. So we're gonna go pull this out and see what's going on. Well now I'm really confused. The splines look absolutely perfect like it slid right in on the clutch, which is what happened. So it doesn't look like it tried to force its way on. The clutch alignment tool goes in like butter. The only thing I could think of was, I can't think of anything that would make sense. I went ahead and cleaned up the input shot because it was grimy, dirty. Oily, greasy, it was just gross, so I went ahead with the pick and a microfiber and cleaned that out. But I'm confused on why it was getting stuck and not letting me first, for one, throw, engage the throw out bearing, and then second, not be able to shift. Because as you guys can see right now, the lighting's going to be poor, I apologize. All the gears work just fine. So I think what I'm gonna do is just throw this uh, throw out bearing back on the clutch fork, get all of that put back together, and I guess drop it in again and see if something magically changes. And the throw out bearing goes on perfectly. So it's not an issue with the throw out bearing. Also for everyone that struggles with getting throw out bearings off, it's very simple. Grab yourself a big flathead, stick it right behind the throw out bearing and twist. It's that easy. All right, so we got all the throw up bearing, the, all of that assembly put back together. Now we are going to try dropping this again and hopefully it just works magically because I did not change anything. The only thing I did was clean the input shaft. So hopefully my clutch works. If you guys have ever had this issue before and I'm clearly missing something, make sure to let me know because I obviously would like to learn and fix if I'm doing any mistakes, but everything I can think of, I don't know. I don't know what could be wrong, but hopefully once we throw this in, everything works perfectly and hopefully the motor goes on nice and easy this time because it is just myself now. So hopefully it doesn't cause me too much trouble.
I fucked myself so hard with how I mounted the motor because you guys can see it's so tilted, which makes it a million times harder to get lined up. So I'm sure this is going to fight me now. Tip for you guys, make sure you guys have it equally distributed the weight so you guys don't have this issue. I am now just picking up the camera. Quite some time has passed, as you guys can see. It is 3.30 right now. So this took me so much longer than I had hoped. Took me longer than even yesterday and I was struggling to put this in. It's been like three and a half hours of fighting to get this motor in. But as you guys can see, everything is bolted up. Now it is time to lower the motor and Get the throwout bearing engaged and pray that everything shifts normal. And there we have it. Motor dropped into the subframe where the motor mount should. So very thankful that didn't take me a million years to get the motor seated properly. But it is now time to engage the throwout bearing. I did take off the slave for that part, but the throwout bearing is now engaged. I'll attach the slave back and see how the clutch feels. All right, now that we have the motor back in the car, I'm going to finish up everything I need underneath the car. I have those two um, wire harness grounds that go on each um, side of the head on the underneath. I need to get the motor mount bolts on and then the downpipe um, bolted up as well. And then I can put this car back on the ground, make it a lot easier working inside of here instead of throwing out my back. All right, underneath the car is 100% buttoned up. I went ahead and got the downpipe placed on the oil return line, which you guys can't see. Anyway, I got everything I need from under the car buttoned up. Now it is time to lower this car and start getting the rest of the accessories on. So I think the slave took a shit on us, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get that part finished up today. And then with that being said, I can't really put the starter in because that will restrict my space when I'm working on that. But I can try to get everything else done so when tomorrow comes, all we have left is a starter and then the slave and then we can fire this thing right up. I also couldn't get this car started today because I did go ahead and delete my power steering. And then in doing so, I now can't use the same belt. So I need to do some research and see what size belt will work because I have an alternate relocation. So I need to figure out people that have done this in the past and what size belt they use. Napa should carry all of them. Every kit, like the alternate relocation kit is just a Napa belt. So hoping I can find some information on that. Order one tomorrow or tonight, just depending on if they have them in stock or not. Because... I obviously will not be able to really start the car without the alternator on. I mean, I could, but it would quickly die just running off the battery. So I'll set you guys on a little time lapse of buttoning the rest of this car up. Well, I think that's actually all I can do tonight. There's really not much left I can do. I can't quite throw on the charge pipe or the radiator because I still need to access the serpentine belt and I cannot do it with the charge pipe and radiator in. I put the AOS in, but since I had it located here in the last setup, the lines are too short. So tomorrow I need to go buy some more lines to finish it off. But this is what we have so far. We are not that far away from a startup, just a few pieces that we are missing. It is unfortunate I did not realize a lot of the stuff that I am needing just because I changed a lot of things. But tomorrow we will get everything ordered or picked up and get this car on its way to its first startup. All right, guys, that is going to end today's video. Unfortunately, did not make anywhere near the progress I was wanting to, 
but the truth is I have not been feeling good for the past couple days and I'm sure it does not help being in that freezing cold shop every day. So my motivation and energy level was very low today. I'm sure you guys can tell in the video. So we might take it slow for the next few days, just get everything ordered. Not try to rush this car like crazy because initially I wanted it running yesterday. But obviously that didn't happen. But I hope you guys still enjoyed this video. Maybe learned a thing or two. But with that being said, I think that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.